I've seen the whole thing, every you individual mean? board was seen 360. Um, this is Mochi Eugene coming like to you with another off, video laid them all of exit around, strategy. All, all the way around. Mute this. Um, today is Sunday, Super Bowl Sunday. I just thought I'd come in real quick. I wanted to do this earlier, but nonetheless, here I am. This is uh, involving just protecting your energy, and uh, this is a part of an exit strategy as well. All the while, while you're in this relationship with friends, family, loved ones, you name it. And today is uh, Super Bowl Sunday. And the reason why I'm emphasizing uh, Super Bowl Sunday, because obviously this is a gathering where everyone, even if you're not a football fan, uh, if you're just there for the halftime show, Dr. Dre and all of these people, this has been drummed up to be, you know, every year it's like millions and millions of dollars into the uh, promoting of this. The commercials, you can buy commercial spots. I've been told that they can go into the millions for 30 second spot and maybe even less than 30 seconds now for just an equally amount of money. And there's going to be a gathering. This is going to be hyped up. Every year, it just seems like everything has to out-hype the year before. And if you look at society, even with COVID, uh, when they first opened the country up prior to the mandates and stuff, which have been lifted here uh, recently in New, in New York State, so you can opt to go in a store or an establishment either with a mask or not. Uh, you're not it's not mandatory. That's, that's sort of irrelevant to what I'm trying to say. So, uh, people are just letting it all hang out, you know. When the country opened up, you could see, like in South Florida, the beaches, people went like hog wild. They went like right back to gathering in close proximity to one another, hugging, kissing, drinking, getting drunk, uh, which is what you'd normally do at a party. But with no regard of safety measures or even their own uh, personal safety, it went out the window. So, I guess you're getting my point all together. It has, has little to do with the drinking and the gathering. It has everything to do with conventional wisdom. But you ask yourself about the narcissist. There is no conventional wisdom. They can pass the buck on conventional wisdom. They can pass the buck on safe sex, cheating how much they ostracize it. And it's interesting on how these monsters, individuals that are demonically possessed can kind of like impose all of this moral standard upon others, but at the same time, they're not even embraced in any of this. Behind closed doors, it's like the hand is quicker than the eye. So today, Super Bowl is Sunday. I just want to let you guys know, protect your energy. Uh, and, and that's why I alluded to the South Florida Beach gathering. Narcissists came out in grand style, man. And they did it all in a disguise as to, man, I'm glad the country opened back up. They hype up any endeavor. They overhype it. They overexcite it. To the point where if you're codependent, or if you don't have a good sense of self, and if you don't have any good self-awareness of a lot of this foolishness that has no substance, no no depth, no base, it's just like a, it's just for the moment, you know, to be excited about something, you know, all good. But you can be generally excited about something, but when these monsters come along, again, if you're not self-aware of who you are as a person, you go with the flow, and this thing becomes very out of, out of pocket. It becomes very uh, out of tune with who you are, and, 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 and when it's all said and done, the dust settles, you come away from that event with that momentary excitement, you come away with it at the end saying, man, hmm, if you're conscious of what just happened, they hijacked your energy. And you would be like, oh man, we had a good time. You would be that one that say, oh, it was a good time, but you wouldn't dare divulge your subconscious thoughts of like, man, I really didn't have a good time because 
you know, knucklehead came along and you ruined it for everybody. But you will have that type of person on the other side of that who is also codependent, who can, who's an empath that might readily identify with what just happened in that event and say, you know, it was a good time, we had a good time, everything was going good until knucklehead came along and then they'll go down the line and just chronologically uh, describe everything bad that went along with this event. So follow me. If you don't protect your energy, I'll give you a scenario to that. I'll give you an example to that scenario. Today is Super Bowl Sunday. You go in with family, friends, or wherever you are, the bar. You're watching the game. You're very in tune with what's going on in front of you. You really don't have a whole bunch to do with what's going on around you. Of, of course, you're, you're casually observing when you have an obnoxious, loud narcissist come in from time to time. Hey, whatever. And you glance over, but nothing breaks your concentration or your, 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 your train of thought to the game. So you continue on watching the game. And this is a healthy person now I'm describing. And for some reason or another, your concentration is broken. As healthy as you might be, because you have this monster, the narcissist, is drawing and extracting all of this undue attention away from the event, the Super Bowl. They're drawing the attention away from that event to them. And most of the time, what they're talking about has nothing to do with what everybody came there to do. And I know somebody understands exactly what I'm talking about because this happens every day, all day, everywhere. But if you're a healthy person and you're beginning to become a healthy person, as myself, you would be able to say, hmm, you can identify, first of all, from the get-go. And thereby you are exiting yourself from that before you even enter into that. That, 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 that hogwash of a, of, of a conversation. And so, a good way I do in uh, avoiding these situations, I just casually observe. You don't want to raise any feathers. You don't want to be offensive like, can you keep it down? You see me watching the game. I found if you ignore these people, if you kind of like, Glance over this way, when they're over this way, and just nonchalant, just mumble somewhat of a little light conversation to someone who's in close proximity to you. Just say, hey, how do you, what are you thinking on this? You just randomly make something up, and you use gestures. So what this does is, for well, the narcissists, they are so, so attention deprived within themselves. They need the attention. So what that does is, if they've observed you pointing, that's directing attention away from them. Because they're scanning everything that's happening in the room. They want to work the whole room. And if they see someone like me who's less interested in anything that they're saying out of their mouth as an empath, you are the target. And so being the target, I extract or redirect the attention away from them towards what we're actually supposed to be attentive to. Now that being said, now you got an idea. Once a person comes in and they're very disruptive and they're just like totally uh, disrespectful, no kind of, uh, no, no kind of, no kind of uh, respect for what's going on and they just walked in the room, this is telltale signs of a narcissist. I mean, if you're saying to see someone you haven't seen in a while, okay, you come in, you say your piece, you hug, you get a little excited, everybody sits their ass down. These people can't do that. And then if someone scores a touchdown, and everybody in the room was pretty healthy or have a little more self-awareness than the narcissist, they get super excited. Something inside of them triggers a dark cloud. And so now, I can't use an example of that, but be mindful. They, in somehow or some way, 
they're going to try to divert that excitement away from what's going on. And they may have, in fact, attempt to try to uh, give that situation a black eye, if I can use that uh, as, as a figure of speech. They will do whatever it is to make that excited event become non-void, non-existent. They'll make that situation not even matter. Now, that's all I have to say about that. Tomorrow's Valentine's Day. I wrote to a friend of mine today and I sent him a link to some vital information that I don't even want to share on here because uh, it, deals with, it deals with a lot of things, secret society specifically. And, and, and just be on guard when you go in depth about things on you know, YouTube. Just use a little bit of conventional wisdom because in how much you know, it, it, it really does, it, it can really strike a chord with all the wrong people. Now, I'll give you an example. I like this shirt from a thrifty shop. I bought it at the thrift store years ago. For some reason, I just liked it. I like it because it's green uh, and it says help people. Pretty straight to the point. And uh, MCOS, we do that. Uh, not so much because we need to brag and write. There's something just intuitive of who we are. But I also know about this. A lot of people might see this and they see it. It's somewhat of the peace symbol. This is what has been adopted as the peace symbol. It will be circular with what seems like a leaf. But let me tell you something. This is an upside, this is an upside down cross, and the peace symbol is similar. And this is attributed more so to gay, lesbian, LGBTQ, XYZ. So no. To, to no mention of that specifically, but that was just a little humor. But most people who are in the LGBTQ TQ community or LGBT community, uh, no offense if I didn't say that right, but the thing is, they, they don't even know what all of the symbolism in here derives from. They don't understand what this derives from. So I'm going to employ you as to go and find out, search deep what this means. This is upside down cross. And this is heavily embedded within the secret society. So anybody wearing an emblem around with this on and you don't understand what it is, you know, go find out. I bought it for this. I like this. And at the time, I didn't, I was unaware of what this upside down cross represented. Anybody who uh, then following the Travis Scott concert, if you realized his stage uh, going in, uh, a part of his stage, which has been well documented here recently, it's an upside down cross, and it's the exact same. It's not it's not uh, angled in this direction, but in fact, it's, it's it goes down, and the cross, the upper offset angles are down this way. So. It's upside down is my point. Almost as like you have the X, I mean the T. My T is always put at center. I don't know why because that's just the way I do it, but that would be the horizontal line would be a little higher. So that's how his cross looked and it was upside down. And all of this was symbolism. Go find out what all this stuff means. And I'm gonna tell you something. Uh, narcissists. They own secret society. They are made up pretty much predominantly of secret society. Power, privilege, control. A few of the little catchphrases there. This is deeper than I think the average, uh, you know, uh, survivor of narcissist personality disorder even understands. And you don't have to be a scholar on this. You just have to go and then research the basic foundations and the origin of how a lot of things became in existence in our world or in our society today such as you know we use number system for a lot of things everything is a number system that in itself if you research the number system all the way back to its origin from the fact that they used to tag cows animals to packages today and so you you really understand how 
your energy needs to be protected and how you should buy into certain uh, circles. And now that's a totally different thing, but something of the same context of what I'm trying to say. Once you understand how your energy is uh, of great value and the narcissist has no value uh, and they need you, uh, they need you like the air we need to breathe. And so if you understand that and you protect your energy, you can actually starve them. You can starve the narcissist. That being said, be blessed.